Okay, so I was nine when I raised my first bum lamb. So I've had sheep pretty much my whole life. And so I wanted to talk about the difference between the different animals that I've owned that I've used for wool. Um, when, when we first uh, got into the homesteading thing, we still lived in town. So I got some uh, giant German Angora rabbits. And they were really nice big rabbits and their wool got like that long. And I found some that were like ultra pedigreed, incredibly nice rabbits for $20 a piece. Except that my car broke down on the way to go get them. So it ended up being like a $700 rabbit because we had to replace a transmission. Thankfully, I nothing happened to us. It was the middle of a snowstorm. And I thought I was going to have to have a trucker pick us up because I couldn't. We were in a no phone zone where phones don't pick up. And that was scary. So my husband wasn't that happy about the rabbits because they weren't $20 rabbits. They were $700 rabbits. And... They were really, really gentle. I never had one nick or kick or eat or bite or anything. The problem is they're incredibly sensitive to heat. So you have to have a place that is really, really like you almost have to keep them in your basement with air conditioning. Their wool, if I can get, if I can remember it right, they're, it's 10 times warmer than sheep wool, but it is very mat prone. And it does not repel water the same way that sheep wool does. It absorbs water. It is the undercoat. So the way the Angoras were established is that all rabbits have that undercoat, that soft fluff. <coughs> With Angoras, what happened is they bred animals that no longer had guard hairs. So the stiff hair that is on most rabbits, that's straight, that's a guard hair. With Angoras, they don't have guard hairs. They're all under wool, um, which is meant to keep them warm in the winter but it's the guard hair that sheds water. So ra uh, angora rabbits can't be out in the rain. It would They would just turn into a felt ball. Um, so they are the ones that we got, they had to be sheared, they couldn't be pulled. And so every three months I had to shear them and, I, and use hand scissors and literally three big grocery bags full of wool every time I sheared them. I couldn't get through it fast enough because for one thing, angora is not an outside garment. Everything I do is very rugged. Angora does not make sense for me because everything I do is very rugged. Um, but it's nice for combining with other things. However, the only thing I could ever get it to combine well with was Merino because it is likewise soft and um, silky and barbless. It doesn't, it doesn't have the same... Anyway, it's softer. It blends better. It's very, very difficult to blend Angora fiber with wool. But I find Angora fiber useless if I can't put it in wool because it is so delicate. So that's why after our first year of owning Angoras, we sold them. And I sold them for, I think, $80 a piece. And it was worth it. They were incredibly nice rabbits. So um, I decided that I'd rather shear sheep once a year than shear a rabbit every three months. And then have to worry about it dying in the heat. Uh, we had... Uh, two females and one male and we could never get them pregnant there was even though I had them trimmed up nice it, things were not connecting so we we decided it wasn't worth it um I just needed to cut back on things so I went and got a, I went and got bum lambs from up in Kiel Dubois went and got sheep up in Dubois which is the sheep experiment station which originally was founded uh to uh, different breeds of sheep, seeing who's better, combining them, seeing who does best on free range and gains weight fastest. And also they were doing experiments to see why, why some male sheep don't reproduce, why they're duds as far as um, breeding goes. So that's why it was established. And now when they have bum lambs, you can get on a list and it costs $7 to buy a sheep. And if you go up and buy seven of them, you come back and sell you know, four of them on Craigslist and keep three for yourself. Um, as long as you have a milk goat, I would, I bring my sheep back and I have a milk goat adopt them because I don't want to be bothered with bottles and they grow a lot faster if they have a mother. Um, I have, I've never lost a, a sheep to scours or anything like that. So we got a sheep and uh, because they have different breeds and varieties up there, shut the door please. Because um, they have different breeds and varieties, we didn't know. I wanted a sheep for wool. 
because if I go buy a grocery or a, a garbage bag full of wool for my friends that's rough carded and kind of clean but has a lot of manure in it, it's going to cost me $60 to $100 for a big garbage sack full, but that's how much I get off one sheet in a year. So, um, so that's why we got her. Um, I prefer to spin with Merino. I just like how it feels. I like to spin with it, but hers is, um, jumper has a kind of a medium, medium long and kind of coarse. Well, this is not her longest piece, but it's kind of her average piece. It's probably about one, two, three and a half, four inches. Um, so, uh, she had, we had other lambs that came with us. And we butchered the ones that had no wool, and we kept Jumper, and she was bigger than the others two. She was the one that I experimented with and put on a goat, and she got she was much bigger and healthier. So we butchered the other one, and we have milked Jumper, and her milk is fabulous. My favorite milk in the world is sheep milk. It is sweet, and it has a really, really nice, delicate flavor. I much prefer it to goat's milk. However, on a sheep bag, let's see. How, do, how am I going to explain this? Here's the bag. How do I explain it? Their teats on the bag stick out like this, and they're about as long as like one section. So that one section of my thumb, that's how long the teats are. And they stick out like this. So there's a short teat sticking out like this. So when you milk, your hands are like this, and you're squeezing like outwards like that. And, um, well, she does stand and she's good in everything, it's um, not an easy milk. And and she's not a milk animal, so within a few weeks after we take the babies off, her milk is gone anyway. Uh, she's just not meant to be a long lactating animal as a sheep. They don't have that breeding into them the same way that goats do, where they have like the six month to two year lactation. So I like sheep. I like I like sheep wool better because I can, and, and I prefer her wool to merino wool for outdoor wear because it's coarser and um, it's just nice. What else is there? Um, the, the money that we make off the sheep is that she has two lambs every year. Our neighbor has a, a ram and he just lets us use it. We take her over in October and get her bread. It doesn't cost us anything. And um, she always has two rams. So, uh, we let them get to about three months old and they're by three months old, they're as big as she is. And she has really nice milk and we, and we keep them out on pasture. So it didn't cost us anything to have those babies there. And if we sold those babies, they'd be worth $150 a piece. So that's $300. And then I have about a hundred dollars worth of wool off of her in a year. And so $400 is about what we estimate she makes for us in a year. However, we are going to sell her. <laughs> um, she caused one of the goats to have a miscarriage this year because she hit her in the belly when she was only like two months pregnant and she miscarried and um, so I cannot keep her in the same pen as the goats she is much bigger and much stronger than they are and she's just a bully on them and so I'm thinking that this next year we're going to go up and get bum lambs get enough to pay for our gas that we, when we sell them we can have that be what pays for our gas, maybe get them from friends, and raise ourselves a couple bum lambs on goat's milk rather than keeping a sheep all winter long because Jumper eats the same amount in hay as two of my milk goats does. Do? As two of my milk goats do. And that's just an expense right now that's kind of, if she wasn't a trouble and I could put her in with the sheep or put her in with the goats, that wasn't a problem. It would be a different story, but she's the one who broke fences that let my goats out, that let them eat fruit trees in the backyard. The goats didn't break that fence. She broke that fence. She's hard on fences. Um, I can tie her out, but in the winter, I don't want to tie her out. The more pla the di more different places in the winter, I have to get that water and food to. The harder it is for me, the, the, the less I like what I do. I need to be able to keep all the animals together in the same space so that I only have one place to bring food and water in the winter when it's 30 degrees below zero, you only want to be hauling hot water to one bucket. So um, I haven't been doing a lot of spinning lately because we've been really busy. And this last winter, 
I made I made gloves and sweaters for family for Christmas. But I haven't been doing it a lot now. But our weather is really a lot cooler today. And I've already got my chores done. And I don't have anything that needs to happen outside. So uh, these are some of the spinning videos you guys requested. And I'm going to see how many more I can get done. If you live in my area, go to PJ Hartwell. They're the place that I like to get um, my, my wool and my spinning wheels and my cards. And I really like them. Uh, they grow their own wool a lot of romney uh they have some rombulae but they carry the softer wools too and they always have sheep for sale and they have alpaca wool and angora they just have pretty much everything they don't have rabbit um and they go to all the fiber fairs in the area so pj hartwell um is where i like to get my wool because it's local so, there you go